just leaving, guys. They come in to have a snack. Parents are super paranoid, though. I looked out the uh, kitchen window, I saw them, so I thought I'd come up here to get a, uh, a better view for you guys. As soon as they saw me moving in the kitchen, they started leaving. I know I'm not supposed to be filming because I've got to be working, but I, you know, I was hoping to catch some video for you. That's the best I can do for you guys. They are super paranoid. They leave pretty quick. Yeah, I'm coming out to let you out. And that third goose is always with the pair. I wonder if it's the offspring from last year. It's just strange that one single goose is always with that pair. All right, I'm gonna let the ducks out. I'm, uh, I'm not filming because I'm working today. Well, I'm not supposed to be filming. Today's turned out to be a little bit of a day off thing. I'm, 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 I'm a little bit burned out today. But I'm going to show you an egg, um, how thin they are. Like, they're really, really fragile shells. Like, super, super thin. Like, they're just, they almost disintegrate. It's actually, the membrane inside is what's holding them together. They're uh, like probably the thinnest shelled eggs I've ever had here. Like the way they bust, they they shatter. Like actually, look at it. You can see. I don't know if it's shown in the video. Like look at that. It's the membrane totally that's holding them together. Like there's um, there's so. I hope that's showing up in the video, guys. Just to show you how thin they are. I've never seen them uh, this thin. I think next week's gonna be just awesome here. So it's probably a good idea that I take a couple days of recharge here and do some work off camera. Because I think next week's gonna be nuts. Because, uh, like, look at that. I hope that's showing up. I don't know what the light's like here. Like, I've never had my eggs uh, fragment like that. Like a duckling would blow right through that. So that's how thin my eggs are. Crazy stuff. Awesome, actually. Exactly what the doctor ordered. I just witnessed the most amazing thing, guys. Um, I wish I, uh, <laughs> I had the camera. I keep putting the camera away because uh, I'm taking a day off here. But something came um, flying over top of the property. Doug lost it. And the Canada geese were right in the yard with their baby and they didn't even like did not even run they were actually so calm it blew me away but we've got a seagull problem right now over top of the property and that's what Doug's been losing it so I don't know if this if the Canada geese just know that Doug's chasing everything away because like I couldn't believe it they didn't even uh, make a dash for it and like I know Canada geese would uh, you know they would actually go after Doug if he got too close to their baby. Is, uh, you know, I know they can get really aggressive. But what, uh... I don't see the baby anywhere there. Yes, the baby's around somewhere. I'm telling you, that little baby just disappears in the swamp. You can't tell where it is. Yeah, like I can't see it anywhere. It's somewhere right around those two birds. And then there's the third can of goose that is hanging with them. I wonder if that's last year's offspring. Or it's a lone goose that's lost its uh, meat. And it's just hanging here. Who knows? But I'm looking, I don't see the baby anywhere. Well, I can't see it in the viewfinder. I was just getting my uh, my lunch ready because uh, it's lunchtime here. 
and Doug just like lost it and I came out and looked and I could see the seagulls flying over top and he's chasing the seagulls away and uh, the Canada geese don't care about him which is really strange because Canada geese are like so protective of their young the fact that they let Doug get so close to them maybe they know that Doug is you know good news here I gotta get some food in me and then I'm gonna uh, come out here and do some work off camera Actually, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on the, uh, the uh, uh, hatcher off camera. Humidifier is affixed on the uh, hatcher. It's running and it's just spitting out water like crazy. Just exactly like, actually misting exactly like it's supposed to. So what I did was I removed the uh, scientific uh, uh, hydrostat off of uh, the uh, hatcher. And I put it over here in the incubator because I want to make sure it's the same reading as the incubator because I know the incubator is right because it matches well I don't know I wouldn't guarantee it's right but it seems to be matching uh, the incubator settings exactly there's like no variation whatsoever so I'm gonna see if this just needs to be adjusted to match this if it's completely out of whack I'll use the uh, solution I'll show you the solution I can't remember exactly how it works I'd have to get the, the manual out but this is the up the higher limit and then the lower limit and there's destructions on how to do it. So if it doesn't match the incubator, I'm gonna recalibrate it. So I'm gonna let it run tonight and see what happens. But it's definitely blown out a lot more mist. Uh, I can see, I can, actually I put my hand in, your hand gets wet putting it over top of the uh, humidifiers. And I'm hoping to catch the, uh, the Canada geese back in the yard because they keep bringing the baby into the yard. I'm working in the back room and I keep looking up and they're coming right into the yard. So I'm, but I keep, by the time I get out there, with the camera, they've left. I can't get close enough. I want to get a really good uh, uh, shot for you guys. A video, not a shot, <laughs> uh, of the Canada geese. Yeah, they're down at the creek right now. Haven't done a lot today, guys. I've actually been burnt out. I think today I needed to, to sort of like not work too hard. I ended up doing a big edit. Yeah, they're down at the water. Tomorrow's going to be a big day here. I'm not going to be uh, editing anything. So you guys are going to be like without, you'll be going through duck withdrawal. Yeah, humidity is climbing. You can actually watch it go up. Look at that, she's like, it didn't do that before guys. So I fixed the uh, humidity problem. Yeah, she's going up good. And I'm thinking, <laughs> what I'm looking here, temperature's right on, 37.4. 37.3, but the humidity's up. So I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do a calibration. I'm thinking I, I might go totally missing guys for about two or three days. I was in the garage working and I thought to myself, you know, right now, oh, let's go be flying. Oh, just a little bit of flying. I was in the garage working and I was thinking to myself, you know, maybe I should take a, a little bit of time off. Well, that's a drake chasing a female take a little bit of time off here before the hatch because you know once the hatch starts uh, it's pretty well 5 a.m. till 10 p.m. here so it's gonna be pretty crazy so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna focus on getting things uh, set up here and a lot less camera action and uh, you know sort of like semi semi holidays but not really sort of like the calm before the storm type thing my body's telling me I need to do that. Okay, I just read the uh, the destruction manual. I, I've got no choice but to do a calibration here because it definitely is out compared to the other one. So what this is, uh, it's, I was mistaken. You don't do high and low. You do the parameter that you're going to be closest to. And since we're going to be uh, the high end, which is 75, actually we're going to be between 60 and 75%, you want to make sure it's reading 75. So this is uh, 75 uh, tester, and it gives you actually Actually, you can see on it there, it's got the temperature and the uh, humidity, relative humidity, it should be reading on the meter. So I have to let this sit one hour, and uh, when I come out here, whatever the uh, ambient temperature is, I should have that reading uh, on the humidity. If not, I have to do a, an adjustment on the pod on the back end. So I'm doing a one hour wait, and we're going to come back out and do a calibration on this rig and get it right. Like I said earlier, these are high-tech uh, humidistats. They're, uh, they're scientific grade. I, I didn't screw around on this part because I want to make absolutely sure I had the temperature and I had the humidity right. And this is, the, this is how you do it, guys. If you want to spend a lot of money, which 
I didn't really want to spend the money, but I wanted to make sure it was right because the uh, the testing pods were like a hundred bucks for two pods. It was crazy expensive. That scientific stuff. I think they're when they're they're, they're waiting for you, you know, and they're like, okay, bend over. This is the price. So I'm gonna wait an hour, come back, see what the reading is. Well, it's been one hour, guys, and it's out by 11 percent, which is exactly uh, what has been out of whack in the hatcher. So I'm just going to adjust it here and uh, then let it sit another hour to make sure. So it was out of calibration. It's strange how this one went out of calibration, but the one in the incubator didn't. Well, you know, guys, the other day when I said, you know, I'm, I hope I'm not jinxing it uh, by doing this early and getting the machine up and running. Well, I got the machine running. Uh, as, as you can see, it's 75% humidity and 36.8, you know, the temperature. It just turned off, so it was at 36.9 actually. I have been screwing with this uh, humidistat for over three hours. I've been working here on the computer, doing uh, some editing here because I'm planning on taking uh, some filming days off and I, I, I can't get it to adjust. I keep turning the screw, wait a half an hour, you know, and turn, it's off by 10%. And I'm online and it's 75 freaking dollars to get another one. And I don't want to take a chance, you know, like we've got the, the eggs perfect this year. And I really would like to make sure that the humidity is right. You know, I don't want to, uh, um, I hate to drop the ball at this point, you know, unbelievable. I just don't believe it. You know, I'm, uh, I'm going to screw around with it a little bit more. I just don't want to have to order another one, but I can't believe that it stopped working. Like. And the fact that it's off by 10%, you know, I can't even just say, okay, I'll use it that way. And can, you know, because you don't know, like going to start swinging, it, as it swings more, is it off by 12%? You know, uh, I just don't believe this, man, oh man. I, you know, you know I, I don't think I cursed myself by uh, getting ready early, uh, but I'm just discovering that I had a whole bunch of problems I wasn't aware of. I just don't believe that it's off by 10%. Well, 9% right now, but I can't get it to go above 66. I just don't believe this, man. Oh, man. It never ends here for curveballs. Well, I'm not having a good night, guys. They don't even have stock on that uh, unit anymore, so I've got to do a Google search and, and find another manufacturer. But I just uh, saw the, uh, the geese walking away with their gosling. I don't see the gosling. It was just walking around with them. They're hanging around the yard. Yeah, I don't see the gosling, guys. It was just walking along the shoreline with them. Doug's been doing an awesome job. He's been patrolling the property. He's a little bit tired right now. He's been running the bush all around the edge. And I'm just blown away how the uh, Canada geese are not freaked out about Doug at all. But then again, you know, because the geese have the gosling, they're not doing any flying. And Doug's, you know, he doesn't bother with them if they're walking. It's when they start flapping the wings, he gets excited. And don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends and enjoy the show.